How much water can we get into that glass? How much popcorn can this guy put in a bag that's that shape? Ice cream! How much ice cream can I get in a cone? How many toys will fit in your toy box? All of that is volume. No, no, not that kind of volume. Turn it down. We're talking volume of about how much stuff you can get into a certain shape. Let's get started. The big idea of volume is that you're going to have a shape that is hollow and we want to figure out how much stuff we can put in it. Think about it this way. You take the, the base or the end and you just see how many of those things you can stack up inside until that thing is full. Now these shapes have different kinds of names. This first one is called a rectangular prism. In the real world we call it a box, but <laughs> it's in geometry class it's a rectangular prism. Then this one is a triangular prism. You can see that you the base is the triangle. It'll be in the front and it'll be in the back. The other sides are rectangles. This is a trapezoidal prism. You can see that there's trapezoid in the front and the trapezoid in the back. The sides are going to be rectangles. This one isn't called a prism because it's not a prism. It doesn't have corners and sides. It's a cylinder. Now visualize this base idea. The first thing you do when you want to find the volume is you have to find the area of the base. Now you can choose any of these sides for this guy or for a box. You can choose any side to be the base. I'm choosing this one. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. So it's going to be five times two which is 10. So that is 10 kilometers squared. I'll put the units on at the end. Now to find the volume of this thing, you take your base times your depth or your height. This thing's sitting flat. If it was sitting up where the base was actually on the bottom and this was on the ground, the nine would be the height. But since it's sitting down like this, it's going to be the depth. So those two words I'm gonna use interchangeably. So that was the 10. We already figured it out. We're going to take that times the 9, which is the depth, and that gives us 90 kilometers cubed. The volume is a cubic three-dimensional measurement. This is a triangular prism. This triangle is a right triangle. This was the one I just showed you a minute ago, but now it has you now you can see the measurements. So we start by finding the area of the base. It's a triangle, so the formula is one half base times height. The base of the triangle is this side right here, which is three. The height of the triangle is four. We are not going to use this five. That's the slant height. If This would be the hypotenuse of that right triangle. We don't need that for this formula. So one half times three times four would be one half times 12. And that gives us six square yards. The volume is going to be that base area, which is 6, times the depth, which is 12. And so we're going to take 6 times 12, and we get 72 cubic yards. Now this whole idea of height versus depth just has to do with how you're looking at the picture and what it makes sense to you. If it was rotated, that 12, all of a sudden, I wouldn't, you could call it depth, but all of a sudden the word seems to be height, right? You're still using the same measurement. You're still using it the same way. If it looked like this, you would find the area of that triangle because that's the base because it's the same shape on the other side. And then you'd multiply times the 12 and that would be how many you could stack up inside that figure. Okay, let's do this, this one with the trapezoid. And there is our base. And so the area of the base is not going to be the same formula for every problem. It just depends on the shape of that base. Since this is a trapezoid, you got to go look up that formula. The area of a trapezoid is one half base one plus base two times the height. The bases, base one, base two, are the edges of the trapezoid. One there, one there. So one half times the sum of four plus 11 times the height. So the area of a trapezoid is kind of like the area of a triangle. One half base times height. It's just this sucker's got two bases, so you got to add them together. It's 45.75. Volume, big idea, 
you find the area of the base and you multiply it times the depth or the height, however you want, whichever word makes sense for you in this case. I'm going to use that eight right there. There it is. That's, we got to take the trapezoid to the other trapezoid. The distance it has to travel is eight. So 45.75 times the eight, and that turns out to be 366 inches cubed. Once you figure out how to set these up, you, the math part's not hard. Hey, let's do a cylinder or a can or a swimming pool or however you want to think about this. We still need to find the area of the base. Well, the shape is a circle. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. And the volume is going to be the base times the depth or the height, however you want to think about it. So we're going to go pi times 10 squared, because that's the radius, times 6. Now, the reason I wrote it like this is because sometimes in geometry, these problems, they're going to ask you to give the answers in terms of pi. So it just depends on how the, what the directions say. So if you, it's in terms of pi, you don't multiply the pi through. If you're supposed to give an approximate answer, you multiply the pi through and you get, I got 1,884 feet cubed. That is cylinders and prisms. You take the base times the depth or the height. Okay, we're switching gears here a little bit because we've got another kinds of shapes that we have to talk about. And those are the pointy ones. So here I have pyramids. In order to understand volumes of pyramids, you have to understand how they relate to the volumes of the boxes. If the area of the base of this is the same as the area of the base of this pyramid and the height is the same, three pyramids will go into a box. Or in other words, if you filled each pyramid with sand, because I'm thinking about Egypt right now, you would have to pour three of these into the box to fill it. Trust me, but verify. I'll put a link up here so you can see someone doing the demonstration. I'm just saving time and not doing it. But three pyramids equal one box. So the relationship is, is if you took that box and you split it into thirds, one third of a box would equal one pyramid. Same thing is true about cylinders and cones. If the area of the base, which is a circle, if the same size circle is on the bottom of the cone and the cone is the same height as the cylinder, you're going to pour three cones into the cylinder to fill it up. So if you take a cylinder and divide it by three, you get one cone. That's the idea. So when I start doing these problems, I want you just to remember something and I'll say it repeatedly. Pointy things get divided by three. You do the volume the same way as a regular cylinder and you just divide by three. All right, we're going to find the volume of a pyramid and it is a square pyramid. I can say it's a square because it tells me that this side is nine and that side is nine. And I see all these little right angles in here. So I got a square on the bottom. So you got to find the area of the base, which is going to be nine times nine, length times width, 81 square feet, just for fun. If that were a box, you'd go straight up and then you would multiply that times 12. But it's not a box because it's going to a point. And if it's pointy, that means you're going to have to take the volume of a box and divide it by three. So base times height, which would be the box. And we're going to divide that by three because it's a pyramid. Pointy stuff gets divided by three. So we're going to take 81, which is the area of our base times the height, which is 12. And we're going to divide that by three. And we end up with 324 cubic feet. All right, we have a cone that fell over. The base is a circle and it's not a cylinder because it does come to a point. Let's find the area of that base. So we need the circle formula, which is pi r squared. The radius is two. This is it. This four right here. This is a diameter. When you see the arrow pointing to the middle and you've got the line going to all the way across, that's telling you the diameter is four. So the radius is just two. And we end up with four pi for the area of the base. And I'm leaving it in terms of pi until the end because I don't know what directions you're going to get. And I know that leaving things in terms of pi is, is tends to be the most confusing thing, even though it's the easiest because you do less math. 
So now to find the volume, it's pointy, so you got to divide by 3. You're going to take 4 pi times the height or the depth, it's 8, and then that would be the volume of the cylinder, but it's pointy, so you got to divide by 3. So we end up with 32 pi over 3. 32 doesn't divide by 3, so you would leave it like this if those are the directions, if they say in terms of pi. It's cubic centimeters. If you're going to go a little bit farther in having to get a decimal that you round off, you're going to get 33.5 centimeters cubed. Another kind of problem you're going to get is sometimes they don't give you all the information to find the area of the base. They just tell you the area of the base. And that's actually to make the problem easier because finding the area of the space is, is pretty involved. So they're going to just find the area of the base for you and tell you what it is. But that tends to throw people off, so I wanted to include one of those here. Well, volume is always going to be base times height, that, and if that went straight up, but it's pointy, so you've got to divide by 3. And all you do is substitute in the area of that base, which is 312, take it times the height, which is 10, divide by 3. And we end up with this calculation. So our final answer is 1,040 cubic feet. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.